Hi, my name is Keith Cooper. This is one of my series of short videos looking at aspects of black and white digital photography. Ways of improving your black and white digital photography, just trying it out or just taking better photos. I have to mention right at the start, if you want to take better photos, take more photos. That's that out of the way. Um, but it's about experimenting. One of the joys of black and white photography for me is that I have a lot of choice after I've taken the photo, how I process the image. Now I have that in color. I can change contrast and brightness and things like that. But unless you're looking for effects, then a color photo is a color photo. You can change aspects of it. With black and white, you've got far more power to interpret the source image, to get out of it what you actually want. Now, I've got lots of stuff on the website about black and white, in particular conversion to black and white. I've got a page which has dozens of different techniques and methods I've collected over the years for converting from color to black and white. Doesn't need to be complex. It can be simple, simple as in Photoshop or Lightroom or something, a basic default black and white conversion. That's fine. That may produce results you like. So I've got a, a video that looks into more detail in this, by the way, for this particular image. There's a picture I took in Colorado. Uh, I stopped because I used to be a geologist and the color of the rocks just caught my attention. And it was a nice view, so I took a photograph of it. Uh, it's a very colorful view. These colors are not cranked up that much because that's actually why I stopped the car on seeing the colors of the rocks and was interested. You can see this from on Google Maps from the aerial view. If you look at it, you'll find the view of it with these bright rocks. They're that intense. So there is our color image. Now, depending on how I want to convert that, because the color image is a three channel, red, green, blue channel image, there are several different ways of converting it. Now, the default version, just does that. Okay, it's given me a bit of lightness here. The sky is dark, the clouds show up quite nicely. That's not bad. How about if I look at the individual channels that go to make it up? Well, one of the things is I can split off. There's the green channel. Now the green channel, green things show up light. There's the default conversion, there's the original. There's a green things show up light, so it changes the tonal balance of it. If I take that, if I take the blue channel, because the blue in the sky is very strong blue light, comes out almost white. You'll notice that some of the rocks, particularly the grayer rocks here, come out quite light as well. Now, that's the blue channel. There's the green channel. We've actually got three channels. What about the red channel? Well, this is the one where if you used film, you may be familiar with using a red or an orange or a yellow filter to bring out skies. You'll see the skies are much more intense in it. So just in deciding which color channel to emphasize here in the conversion, I've generated different versions of a black and white image. And that to me is one of the power of processing black and white. You get to optimize the tonal balance between the different colors, the way you feel fit. And you can do quite a lot of it with simple conversions. This does not need fancy plugins. Now I've used Nick Silver Effects for years, often just to try experiments with things, and then I may duplicate the effects elsewhere. It varies, sometimes it works, sometimes to me it looks simply over-processed. And the area where I find things can look over-processed is getting halos around things and other effects like that. Now, it can, I've looked at, at how you can reduce that in Silver Effects. That's an article I wrote several years ago with Silver Effects because I use it a lot. Now, when you're processing images, you have that choice. So, there's a shot, there's a road in Colorado. The snow had melted on the road and I've got some very vigorous cloud. That's a high contrast image. Um, that's needed not much processing, but it's a high contrast image. Depending on what you want, such as this view here taken on Highway 101 on the, in, on the Oregon coast, that's a fairly basic conversion. 
All I've changed in that is I've changed the tonal balance with a few layers and la mast adjustments, bringing things up, bringing things down. A few basic adjustments to that, just to get the tonal balance over the whole picture I want. Once again, I saw the scene there, I thought, yeah, that's it. I took some pictures, got back. Once I started experimenting with it, it took a bit of experimenting, in particular, how much to bring out the detail in these dark areas of the picture. I don't want them solid black. I don't want that level of blackness. I want something a little more subtle. I want to see detail in those areas. So it's quite a bit of a balancing act of how you do it. But the conversions are easy to try. You can go back, you can use something simple like a channel mixer. You take it and it mixes varying amounts of different colors together and produces different effects. You can have tools like uh, Nick Analog Effects, which even will simulate black and white film. Does it very well. If you have a particular film look you like, then it'll probably do it for you. It's very good. I've done shots with that. I've converted them from color to black and white using that. And I think, yeah, that looks like film. Reminds me why I wouldn't have shot it on film. So I go back and redo it. Just depends on what you actually like. But there's lots of different ways. There's a shot I took. Uh, this was um, of the Tetons. It's just on a snowy day and a bit of mountains poking through cloud. Now, I prefer this image with it quite soft. You could crank up the detail in the cloud here and completely change the look of it. This is the look I wanted for this picture. May not be the look that you like for it, but all that information is there. Well exposed image, then choices what to do afterwards. So when you're looking at doing black and white from colour, go out, get your pictures. And I've mentioned before about using your archive and going through that. Look at how colour maps to black and white. There is no tone of grey which equates with red. There's no tone of grey for blue, green, any of those. There is no automatic tone of grey. It's what looks right. Sometimes shifting those balances can change. If you want a good example, go and take a photograph that's got a bright red object in it and look at the different conversions in the same way that I've converted this image here in different ways and look at how it, how it changes. There is no correct way of doing it. It's a way that looks right to you. Um, and you, after a while, you get to appreciate different aspects of black and white. So, for example, you appreciate that shadows have far more importance in black and white photography in general than they do in colour. It's not to say they're meaningless in colour, of course they're not. But shadows in black and white photography can become a compositional element much more than I find so in colour. Colour draws your attention to colours. Um, I've done in, in another video looking at old photography books. Many of these older books, colour photography is a relatively new thing. Look at what they use to show examples of colour photography. Look at how they're talking to an audience that is steeped in black and white photography. Look at how they explain colour. Look at how they cover colour composition. Remember, you come from a colour view, colour television. When I grew up, there was black and white television. Don't know whether that makes a difference to how I perceive things when I'm going out doing black and white photography. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But the important thing is to experiment. Look at how your colour original images turn into black and white. If you don't like them, do them a different way. Still don't like them, go out and take more pictures. It's as simple as that. I mentioned that one, yes. Anyway, I hope that's been of some use. Um, please do ask questions, comments. Um, I appreciate it on the videos because they often give me ideas for entirely new stuff. And I'd like to do more about black and white because I feel it's an area that's somewhat neglected. Now, I do a lot of coverage of printing and cameras and other stuff like that. But um, I will try and do more black and white things as well. So thanks for watching and always oh, subscribe to the channel, please, if you found it useful. Thanks.